What's up, everybody? Today, you're going to help me. Uh, I am trying to figure out what the future of Laracast looks like, uh, considering AI, obviously. So as you can imagine, um, like any educational platform, I would imagine, I'm trying to figure out where we fit um, in the future. Um, does Do things like ChatGPT dramatically affect the way we learn? And I think obviously the answer is yes, and for good reason. So um, where does that leave traditional video-based education? Like, um, does that go out the door? Is it unaffected? Um, do we need to tweak it? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And yeah, like I said, again, I would imagine any owner of an educational platform is thinking about this exact thing uh, more than they might admit. Uh, where do we go from here is, is sort of the um, maybe that's the title of this episode. Where do we go from here? Where does Laracas go from here? So, uh, all right, let's set the scene. OK. <laughs> Currently, um, things are good. Like, I'm not noticing any uh, significant decline in revenue. Um, maybe slight, but like nothing, nothing that would indicate this revolutionary new um, milestone uh, in the programming world. Uh, it's mostly mostly flat. I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of growth, but consistent and good. Uh, it allows me to pay a bunch of people to keep producing good content. So from that perspective, we're okay. But having said that, um, I don't know. I, I just, I just have a feeling about this. So I'm trying to figure out like what I, I want to avoid the blockbuster uh, outcome as much as possible. Uh, granted, we're a very tiny business, but it's the it feels the same to my business as uh, the owners of Blockbuster might have felt. Uh, how do we how do we prevent this? How do we delay it as long as possible? How do we um, move with the tides? So I just want to go over this with you. Uh, I would love for some of you. Obviously, this is a one way street. Uh, but if this is something you think about, too, or you have specific ideas here, please reach out to me. Uh, I'm on Twitter or X, uh, Jeffrey underscore away. You can email me at Jeffrey at Laracast dot com. Um, that's about it. I'm on Telegram. I don't know what I am on Telegram. Is it phone number based? Is it username? I can't remember. Uh, if it's username, it would just be Jeffrey Way, one word. Anyways, if uh, you're so inclined, reach out. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, option one, just stay the course. And you know what? I think... I think stay. I, I think people underestimate the value of stay the course to the extent that Laracast has been successful over the last ten years. Relatively successful. Obviously, we're not. We're not Microsoft. Uh, even even that much of Microsoft. But you know, for a kind of a lifestyle business, I employ a bunch of people. I consider that a success by any stretch. Anyways, to the extent that we've been successful, I would attribute a lot of that to just showing up. Uh, there's so much value in just showing up and doing the thing every single day. Um, over the years, I've 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 seen people where it's like they come onto the scene and they do something amazing, and I think, oh, this is going to be a significant competition for us. And almost like clockwork, they just fizzle out. Uh, they lose interest. They move on to other things. Uh, so there there is a lot to be said for just picking your thing, and then you're just going to chip away at it every single day. You're going to get a tiny bit better. Every day, and I think you'll you'll see that with Laracast compared to when we launched in 2013. It's like it's it, there was never some dramatic improvement where it's like now we got 30 million dollars in funding and suddenly the site has you know 10x or something like that. It never happened, but it did get just a tiny bit better. You know, every year it got. 10, 15% better to the point that now I think we we produce really cool content. We have these amazing animations. The side is starting to look the way um, I would like. Um, and that's all the result of just incremental improvement. So there is a lot to be said for like, don't, don't become distracted. Just keep doing your thing. Um, this is common investment advice, right? Uh, so often when the market takes a huge dip or something, people freak out and they sell and then 
they screw themselves over. And there's a lot to be said for just sitting tight. Just just hold on to it and just just ride the wave once again. Uh, so that's an option. Uh, what do we have here? I've made some notes. Um, what else could we do? So just as an aside, I think text-based courses, I think that is probably dead in the water. Um, th these would be courses that are not video-based. A lot of people do this, where it's almost like a book, but as a website, right? Uh, maybe maybe they've created chapters, maybe they have examples and things like that, but it is all text-based. And traditionally, the value of this is, again, in the curation. Uh, these are curated text-based courses that you can, you can trust more. It's easier to follow especially if you're not really a, a visual learner. It's easier to follow, uh, especially if somebody has lined it up for you. Here, do this first, then do this. Here's an example. Here's a little project you should work on. But again, at the end of the day, it's all text space. I feel like that's probably dead in the water because um, I can just have AI do that for me. I, I can tell it to create a perfectly curated uh, syllabus for me, considering where I currently am in my learning. Uh, it's dynamic. So we are now at a point where curation, I think, is no longer a selling point. When it used to be very much a selling point, often you were paying for the curation, I think. Um, you were paying for education that you could probably get for free around the web, but you had to search the web. You had to piece the puzzle together. The curation provided the value of like, no, the puzzle's already put together, and now I have divided it into do this piece, and then this piece, and then this piece, and then you will have a complete puzzle when you're done. Uh, I just don't, I, I'm not sure there's much value. Huh, am I wrong here? See, I'm, I'm working this out as I talk to you. I don't think I'm wrong. Uh, I, I, I think the value is starting to go away. Maybe just... As I'm saying this, I'm just not sure. But um, I'm going to go with my gut. I, I think if it's not gone away entirely, uh, it has diminished dramatically, to use two D words. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, w areas we have embraced AI for Laracast is in all the areas you would naturally expect, right? Uh, we use AI for transcriptions. We use AI for um, audio translation. So now you can, if you want, uh, I'll do it for this video. In fact, uh, you can hear me in Spanish. You can hear me in French. And it's actually shockingly good in many cases. So we use AI for that. We use AI to take the AI generated transcript and then once again generate basically like an article or a summary article based upon that transcript and AI does that as well. Um, there's other areas um, I'm working on right now where we can use it more for like uh, suggestions. Here's here's what AI thinks you should watch next based upon or dependent upon what you have already watched. Um, that can be more beneficial than you just searching for the next thing or us giving you a pre a pre-prepared, a pre-prepared, a prepared uh, path, which we offer on the site at laracast.com slash path. Uh, but it might be more beneficial where it's like, all right, you seem to be into this and this and this and this. Uh, I'm going to feed that to AI and it's going to say, you should probably watch this course or this course next. That's probably the next step in your learning. Um, so that's interesting. We are leveraging it, but it's still, you know, a traditional video-based education platform. And what I'm trying to figure out with you is like, do we need to adapt? Do we need to change? Are we dead in the water? And you know what? Depending upon the day, I uh, say yes to each of those questions. Are we dead in the water on Monday? Yes. On Tuesday, do we just need to adapt and improve? Yes. Wednesday, stay the course. People still want to learn from humans. Yes. And what that means is they're all partially correct, uh, which is why I just kind of keep spinning my gears here. Um, so one option is like we we stay the course of, of course, we stay the course of course of course, uh, but we, we expand in certain areas. So you could imagine things we could do is of course leveraging AI quite a bit more. Um, we could lean into our exams feature more. The exams at Laracast, we only offer for more of the like introductory uh, courses. We could expand that, but also I do that because I feel like that is the stage when you're most likely to work through these little interactive exercises where a code editor pops up, you have a little challenge, and you have to do it in the browser. And then you submit your question, we evaluate it, we run uh, a bunch of tests to see if you solved the challenge. 
challenge. And if not, we we say try again. So one thing we could do is like expand to that and create an AI character. Uh, maybe we use the mascot Larry uh, from Laracast for this. And he can actually evaluate the question, what your provided uh, solution was. And if you're wrong, he can actually give you some feedback, almost like a little text bubble, like, hey, uh, we can make it kind of cute and animated where he's talking to you. Uh, maybe you should uh, research PHP variables more because it seems like you're having trouble properly formatting a variable, you know, things like that. That could be fun. Um, and a soft turn, and that's, that's entirely doable. I could do that right now. Um, another option is go all in on the human element. So um, the idea that we will be able to compete with AI that can just generate on the fly a lesson on anything you want to learn. And again, not just a lesson, but a lesson tailored to your needs and your situation. It's, it's, nobody can compete with that. But where you can compete is just, again, in the human element. Um I look at magazines sometimes not because I can't get the information elsewhere or I can't ask AI to summarize it, but because sometimes it's just fun to flip through a magazine, right? Um, and maybe the same is true for um, education. Um, there is an element of entertainment to it. So maybe we lean into that a little more where we're still teaching you, but we are focusing more on just the the joy of being a programmer, the entertainment of being a programmer, the lifestyle and the workflow of being a programmer. Uh, we could lean into that more. If we did that, though, I wonder, are you willing to pay for that? I mean, a lot of that you just get for free on YouTube. Um, our differentiator was always in the courses. So maybe that's just an add-on. Maybe it's something we do, again, to, to focus on the humanity of being a programmer a bit more. Uh, so, yeah, we could focus on interactivity more. We could focus on the human element more. Um, I've had this idea in my head for the last several months of almost like a traditional class-based structure minus the group class. Um, actually, in our, um, what do I call it, the milestones Trello board where it's just like, here's the milestones for the year, the, the big, the big tentpole things we're going to work on. I keep delaying it by a month and a month and a month because I'm, I'm just not sure if it's worth the effort. But there are, you get this with universities sometimes where they have like these online free programs where you get to work through the class. And it is a little more traditional where it's like, here's what you're doing this week and you have your assignment and your homework and you submit the homework and it actually gets graded. Now, I think in real life, these, these places aren't grading your crap at all. It's automated um, and there actually is no human element whatsoever, even though they make you feel like that. Um, in our case, we would actually put the human element in there, but it would be a little more class-based. You would you would watch you would you would watch a video. You would watch a video from me uh, illustrating how to do something, and then there would be like a a group forum specifically for that class. You could talk with others. You would have homework that you have to submit, and if you don't submit it, you get a zero. Like it would be very much class-based. And I'm deciding, like, is that interesting or is that like, well, we, why, like, we've moved beyond that. And, you know, like, that's the old way. And I'm just not sure what I think about that yet, because I, I have to admit there is there is an appeal to it for me. I love the idea of like, no, I'm committing to this and I have a responsibility to do this. And if I don't do the homework, then I'm going to get a zero. Now, granted, in the context of Laracast, a zero doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you're trying to improve yourself and it means something to you. But does it give you that extra um, oomph that that you need to you need to do the work? You need to show up. You need to sit down. You got to watch the video. You need to do the assignment. You need to submit the assignment, and then an actual human is going to go over it. Um, so, from that perspective we wouldn't be able to offer it as like the standard Laracast subscription because I can't go over hundreds and hundreds of assignment submissions. But maybe if we had a higher tier that just by definition, not as many people would sign up for, then we would be able to handle that. It's just a big project though. It's, it's a whole new branch of Laracast. It would not replace what we do at all currently. It would just be an additional branch, um, a, a traditional branch. And I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I I like it myself, but my instinct is young people do not like it and aren't interested. Uh, maybe it would just appeal to, to older folks and 
how many older folks are going to be getting into programming? I just don't know. See, these are the questions that's been around in my head. What else do I have here? Um, and yeah, then there's just the idea of like, a lot of people believe traditional websites are going away. You know, the idea of the traditional prepared UI is done and everything's going to happen through a chat prompt. Uh, maybe that's true. I think, again, going back to the magazine idea, though, I, it's not all going to go through a prompt because I like flipping through magazines. And maybe this is a horrible example because magazines are kind of dead, but I just like the act of flipping through a magazine. And browsing websites is kind of the same thing for me. Uh, what I think will change is, uh, imagine this, um, the idea of a quote-unquote static UI becoming irrelevant. The idea of like, we design the UI at Laracast.com and what you see is what you're going to get. What if instead the UI could be dynamic based upon what you want? So maybe you like you want to see beautiful things so you could have a ui that is just gorgeous to look at full of animations and you can browse through the site in that way or maybe you're 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 data heavy you're like i don't i don't want to see this like huge cnn website i just want to see the the relevant links give me a text only interface or give me that you know the idea of like you getting to pick what your interface is to the uh, website i think is actually really cool um if i could say like um on the homepage of Laracast, here's what I want to see. I want to see the most recent video. I want to see my my bookmarks and my watch later list. And I also want to see the, you know, stuff like that. Um, there's no reason why AI can't just do that for you and give you a curated UI, curated UIs. That's kind of ridiculous, um, but cool. And um, I don't know what that means for Laracast. Maybe that's maybe that's a way off, ways off. Who knows if we'll be around that long. Again, I don't even think that's far off now, actually. I feel like within the year, we could figure that out. And maybe that's the tricky thing right now, is things are moving at such a lightning fast pace that it's hard to keep up a little bit. Let me tell you, just browsing X in that For You tab is probably responsible for 95% of the AI anxiety I feel. Like I saw something from um, the head of OpenAI and he was like, I just, I did a little coding project for our next model and it was um, wildly good and I'm not sure how I feel about that. The fact that he wrote, I'm not sure how I feel about that at the end, it's like partially that is marketing speak. And then maybe some of that is true. And we don't know as, as regular folks, which one is he referring to? Is this marketing for your product or is this you experiencing something that actually freaked you out a little bit. We never know, and we see that same equivalent tweet every single day. Um, maybe we should all get off X. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, that's it. So think about this. Help me. If you're in a similar field, let's brainstorm. Let's think about it. Uh, what do we do? Do we stay the course? Do we adapt? Do we create something entirely new out of this? Do we fold up shop? Uh, everyone who works at Laracast is like, no, don't. And we're not. We're doing good. We're doing good for a while. Um, when it starts to dip, when revenue starts to dip, I will get more worried and I will become more aggressive and possibly tweaking things. But for now, things are good, which means it's a good time um, to think about where we go from here. I'm Jeffrey Way. This is the Laracast Snippet. I'll see you next time. 